Anybody come out to party tonight? Anybody smoking weed tonight? Anybody drunk as fuck tonight? You can't the party, say yeah, 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 yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah, yeah. yeah. Clap. Wait, wait, hey, guys, guys. One or the other. Oh, one clap? No, yeah, do it. Go for it. You do it. Let's go for it. Okay. Smino. What's up? Thank you so much for doing this so late, because I know you had an eight-hour delay on your flight. You yeah. had a terrible day. Yes, I did. It's okay, though. It's, it's beautiful now because the energy I found in Belgium, you know. Oh, well, you, uh, you, oh, yeah, you did the performance. You saw the love that was here. You mm -hmm. immediately killed it on stage. Thank you. So, um, so let's just get right to it. Uh, is this, this is your first time in Brussels? Yeah, first time. I didn't know what to expect, but I know what Brussels sprouts are. And I know what Belgian waffles are, mm. so I was just like, shit, I'm expecting either Brussels sprouts mm -hmm. or Belgian waffles. Oh, well, then you're good to go, basically. Is that where Brussels sprouts come from here? Well, that's, that, that's our cliche. Sprouts, For waffles, real? beer. You, a you actually answered my final question. You just started with my final question. Oh, shit, I'm so curious. I'm sorry. No, 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 that's, that's, <laughs> you're fucking on point. Right. So, um, for my audience who may not be familiar with you and your work, who are you, where are you from, and what do you do? My name is Smino. I am from St. Louis, Missouri, in America. Um, and I make music, I make a lot of music, and um, I kick it with the family all day, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've never been to St. Louis, I only knew it, for, like I only know it from a Nelly song. <laughs> um, how would you describe your hometown to me? If I was there and you had to guide me, where would you take me? Where I take you? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll take you to get some Emo's pizza okay. first, because it's if because you're gonna be hungry because of the flight. Mm -hmm. Then I, uh, hmm, where I take you? It's a shit. I just show you the city. It's like uh, St. Louis is a place where we don't have a lot, but the people make the city what it is. Mm -hmm. So I just show you some cool friends. You know what I'm saying? Cool folks and some real cool, innovative trendsetters out my out of my city. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to get out of there. So they never really get to see the world, and the world never really get to see them for what they are. But I understand. I made it a little bit, though. Mm -hmm. I'm, in, I'm in Brussels. You definitely did. You're great. here. Um, so you come from quite a musical family, from like what I've seen. Like I'm guessing your family has been quite supportive then of your entire journey. Um, what type of music did you grow up on, and who are you mostly influenced by? I grew up on everything, gospel, jazz, hip-hop, gangster rap, mm. shit, uh, R&B. I grew up on it, and um, <coughs> my dad, he always plays some kind of cool music in the car. Anytime we go in somewhere, he plays some shit that I'm like, what is this, bro? Like, and then, um, you know, outside of that, like my mom, you know, she listens to a lot of gospel. Just a mixture of, of you know, the gospel, which is extremely musical, like Black mm -hmm. Church. If you know Black Church, it's really musical, really like a whole bunch of parts, a whole bunch of different, like, you know. High vibration. High, high, high vibrations. Everything is always action. And then even like on like the the performance and the presentation of it is real, just, you know, theatrical. So a lot of like everything I do came out of like I learned from church, like performer was. Yeah, but I yeah, see like, that. I yeah. saw that. And and uh, I heard you were quite a, a very good performer and you definitely like filled that Appreciate checkbox. It. And I definitely see the whole uh, gospel influence in there and the whole... I wouldn't call it dramatic, but like intense emotion. Maybe. Yeah, hella emotion. It's, it's really just, I always like to engage the crowd. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I always want the crowd to be as, having as much fun as I am. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, but you also, you demand their attention and I like that. Oh yeah, you gotta be like, hey. Exactly. Just, otherwise, they'll just be making out the whole time with each other. <laughs> exactly. So wow. Wow, guys, impressive. Okay, 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 hold on. What you think, Elna? It was cute. It was cute. All right, that was. Yes, sir, make some mother. Hold on, right side. I ain't gonna let him do that like that. Okay, now everybody make some noise in this beat. So, 
like how did you start in music? How did it like begin for you? I don't Cause, like, I don't really I always just did music. Like, just, yeah, it's like everybody do it in my house, so it's okay. like shit. <laughs> We just make music. We but then how it. did you like roll oh, recording in the game? and shit? Like okay, so yeah, all right, recording. My pops he like bought me some recording equipment and shit, and then I I like had a bunch of like time after school all the time. I just not do homework and I just do my music shit. That's not a good idea though. Do your homework, but um, no, I'll, I'll do like that shit. And then I went to uh, Chicago mm-hmm. and um, all the shit I was making at home. I played. I played it for my manager now. Okay. Who's my manager now? But he owned the studio. His name uh, Chris Classic. He owned the studio out of Chicago, man. Like you know, Chance the Rapper. He came out of there. A bunch of niggas. A whole lot of people came out of there. And uh, like Jeremiah records there. Everybody. Wow. Like Jeremiah. all of Chicago. All of the Chicago like um, scene. Everybody fucks with him. But um, yeah, he gave me an opportunity to do my thing. And like ever since then, should have been like just constantly progression and progression and progression like i don't mm-hmm. it's not really one thing i can accredit to how i got into the music game it's like a thousand different ways mm-hmm. it was just meant to be basically you, shit, i'm still getting in like it's mm-hmm. like you you keep getting in every day like you trying mm-hmm. to get in it and like expand that shit like you get in but stand in is so hard like mm-hmm. it's a way different thing so um in 2017 you released your debut with Black Swan. Yeah. Um 18 whopping tracks, <laughs> not just like a little album but just like 18 solid tracks that you can like absorb. Um looking back to that project, how would you describe it for people who have not heard it and who should check it out? It's definitely a time capsule of just me like that era of me like the last so 2017 to like 2015. That's just who I am. It's um it's just everything. It's everything that I was confused about, everything I was sure about, everything I was, I cried about, everything I smiled about. It was all just that. So, like, mm-hmm. yeah, man. Um, that's Black Swan, man. Okay. I really love your production. Um, can you tell me a bit about your relationship with Monty Booker and what it is that you're mostly looking for when you're working with producers? Uh, Monty, that's my little brother, my big brother, too, <laughs> at the same time. My mm-hmm. little big brother. Uh, we live together. That's like we, we next room over from me and shit, man. Like it's brothers, man. Brotherly love. You know okay. brothers. You know what that relationship like. Mm. You know what I'm saying. We real cool, real goofy. You know, make a lot of jokes. Uh, when I work with producers, I usually like to. Uh, I'm just always like, I'm looking for my body. Like <laughs> if my body don't, you know what I'm mm. saying. If my body feel it. I'm good. Everything else is good. And nine times out of ten, within the first like three seconds, I know if I like something. Like I, most things in life, too. People, <laughs> mm-hmm. fucking songs, food, anything. I just know early. Do you all? Do you also have to vibe with the person itself? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a big thing. Like, cause you spend many hours in the studio together. Mm-hmm. Like, if you don't like really vibe with him, yeah, it's it like trying ha- to. Uh, you can't really like tell a story with someone. If you don't kind of like have like share experiences, you know, exactly. me and him share experiences together and all of this shit, so like we can make a picture together, like we can p- make a painting together because it'll, it'll have the same type of, it comes from the same type of mind and the same type of like thought web, mm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, Definitely. I didn't want to say vibration because everybody says that, but. Like, yeah, but music is in a way vibration. I know it's hip it's to say 100% that. It's a vibration. But it's a vibration. 100% a vibration. Otherwise, how is it possible to touch music if you don't... To to touch people with music, you coming from St. Louis, yeah. it has to be a vibration. No, 100. 100% mm. it definitely. So um, I feel it feels like you have strong ties with a few very interesting Chicago artists. You work with No Name. I think she's amazing. Mm-hmm. Do I pronounce that correctly? It's mm-hmm. no name? Yeah. Mick Jenkins, I think he's amazing. And a very young talent. Nobody knows him here already, but my eyes on him is called Saba. Saba, yeah. Yeah, really like him. Yeah. Nice flow. Um, can you tell me what exactly that it is that you love about those three artists and what they bring to the table for you? Saba is like my favorite rapper. Like, I like Saba's raps, like <laughs> on some real shit. Like he's a producer too. Okay. Like, Saba is very inspirational to himself as dude like he'll just sit alone and then you won't see Saba for a minute like if you do you see him for a second and then he'll come back with a whole fucking un- incredible album like the one he just dropped like mm-hmm. 
That's damn near the best album I ever heard that was hard really? hard for me to listen to also because it's so much emotion. And I know what he was going through. We was all affected by the same type of... Uh, I, I wasn't affected in the way he was at all because he lost his family, his, his brother, basically his brother. Yes, I am. Okay. And, um, like, that's what his album... Based, it, it was very much so inspired by um, John Walt. So, like, uh, okay. yeah, just to see how Saba can just damn near dig in his head and paint the pictures and, 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 like, put his emotions on paper. Mm. It's hard to do, bro. Like, it's the reason why I'm so goofy in my songs and I'm, like, very witty all the time because it's hard for me to say how I feel. Sometimes I do, and I usually notice when I do, it goes super far. Okay. But, like, that's something I admire about him. No name. Incredible writer, bro. Like, I don't even... I can't really explain that shit. That I was album? Just, uh, yeah, I was just... So good. I was just in the studio with her yesterday before we got here. And she, then she's gonna release a new album, right? Yeah, it's coming. Uh, Room Twenty Five. We was just that shit sounded incredible. Uh, my homie Felix producing that. You on it? Uh, yeah. You know, we getting it cracking. We getting it going. <laughs> I, we I we actually so. still working on the uh, song, so I yeah. mean, it might I might be on it. It's okay. a possibility. If not, that okay. shit gonna come out. And then who's the third person? You said Mick. Yeah. Yeah, Mick. That's the homie, man. He really fucking good at ping pong. He beat the shit out of me, bro. I ain't gonna even lie. Yeah, that's the homie. We just dropped a song together, actually. Okay. New cool poo dish. Uh, yes, I uh, and two months ago or something like that, May or something. Uh, New yeah, cool poo dish. Yeah, type exactly. Shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, did okay. You research, man. Yeah, well, I always do. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I also noticed, and this is an important question. I also noticed there's an Anita remix with the legend that is T Pain. Oh, G Uh You also toured with him. Yeah. Um, how did that connection happen? Tell me. Bro, I I was performing. I had my own tour. Mm. I was on Swanita tour. Okay. My first headline tour. If, uh, a lot of people saw me performing. I had the crutches and shit because my foot was broke. And I was saw that. And you had little little sneakers on the crutches. Little baby shoes, yeah. That baby was, forces. <laughs> that was style. We moving. We doing our thing. And I perform. I'll do a cover of one of his songs, Chopped and Screwed, every night. Okay. And uh. It just get re- reposted all like everybody posting it and shit and tagging T Pain, tagging T Pain. So he hit like he literally found a way to contact me. Um, wrote me in a group chat with his manager and was like, "Hey, I wanna, uh, I'm down to come out and perform that shit." And I'm like, "What?" Mm. So he came to my show in Atlanta, T Pain, which is wow. that's a big deal. I'm sorry, my chain wasn't out this whole time. I'm sorry. That's a big deal. I'm so sorry, y'all. Anyway, oh, yeah, T. T Pain pulled up um, to my show in Atlanta, and like just kicked it with me, jammed with me, got drunk. Took, we took, we went to his house, played me a bunch of music, and then shit. Like uh, I guess like a week later, I was like, "Hey, bro, you think you down to remix my song?" I didn't know what he was gonna say. I had just got his number, and um, he was like, "Hell yeah!" So shit, I went to, when I was in LA. Um, I went over his house. We had an Airbnb, and um, he just he records how I do. He records himself. Okay. Like all this shit. He sat in the room alone, just recording shit. And I walked in on this one part where he was like, Where we bang holes in the bank where we uh where we bang holes in the bank some shit like something about banging holes in the gray weenie bago <laughs> and I was just like, Damn, this song's straight not about banging hoes. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I'ma just see what's going on because that's all I heard. Mm-hmm. So I come back in and shit. And um he <laughs> he dropped the shit. I'm like, Oh as soon as he went to Bizzle, I'm like, Oh my god, this is really hard to do so he played a song, and we all going crazy in the studio. We love it and shit. That's history. Like, we got more shit we working on. We trying to do... We, we working. It's okay. a lot of work, man. So there's, work. like, there's there there might be another track coming out with the two of you? Is that uh, what you're trying to say? Hell yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. A, yeah, lot, I, a lot of Smee Pain, man. Smee Pain on the way. I think I that's mean. a nice combo, and I think it might be, like, a good, solid connection to get T-Pain into... Like a new generation, because I feel like he's so underappreciated in it's a way. Honestly, um, T Pain, I feel like personally, as far as our generation goes, everybody knows him. It's not a soul that don't know T Pain. Everybody knows T Pain mm-hmm. because if you don't know T Pain, you know what T Painting is, the auto yeah. But they put him in one box and he's more than that. No, no, outside of that. The nigga is cold. He's a producer, musician, all that shit. Mm. But he changed the world with auto tune. Like, true. At the end of the day, if you think about him, he changed the world with that shit. So, like, exactly. if you listen to the radio, you hear T Pain every day. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But outside of that, um, I just feel like he also like took a step back at a time when things were changing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. like, 
and that it kind of just you know kind of it kind of makes a separation. But now shit, the nigga doing all he doing his thing again. Shit, he coming, he damn near back. Shit, he back like a mom. All right, straight up. Um, so I met the fellas as I said. I met the fellas from Earth Gang a few weeks ago. Earth Gang, Atlanta shit. Yes, and the thing is, is I didn't know them, so wow. I didn't. I just, I just, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know them. So I was like, I'm gonna do the interview, and I just told him straight up, I don't know your music. This is very weird. I always know people's music. So we're just gonna wing it. And they were like, Yeah, let's like do cool it. Too, yeah. yeah. And we were talking about uh, good performances and how um, how hard it is to find that in hip hop. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Okay, but who do you like? Who has a good solid performance? And Ian said. Man, I thought his performance was Reno. That was amazing. Yada yada yada. You also toured with uh, SZA. Oh, with SZA. I'm yeah, sorry. SZA. Um, SZA. Um, so, who are the live performances that you look up to, and what do you think is important for your own stage performances? Um, Kendrick Lamar, because he merges all of the arts, like theater, dance, and music. Mm-hmm. Then he has a band. Then he has graphics then he has a fucking movie playing then he's like suspended in her Kendrick's the best performer I've ever seen live in my life mm-hmm. period. Okay. like Kendrick Lamar okay like without a doubt that's like probably like the motto like the goal because I have so much range when it comes to performing I just don't necessarily have like have the all of the money to do the shit I want to do yet but like yet yeah oh yet. no I know I'm gonna get it I'm gonna be fi- filthy fucking rich but <laughs> first, bless you. First, first, we'll take it slow. You know, mm-hmm. do these good shows because it's like I feel like it's more important just to opposed to like sugarcoating the whole show with like lights and bills and all of this shit. At first, it's important for people to get to just see me. You in exactly. the band. You know, I, I usually play with a band. This shit's way crazy. I got a. Uh, I got my headline show in London I've tomorrow. I've seen that. I've seen that in St. Louis. Whole band, backing vocals. Yeah. Looked amazing. That's how we, uh, that's that's like really how we usually move. But uh, I almost had like D'Angelo uh, vibes. I in love a way. D'Angelo. Love, love D'Angelo. That's from, for me, that's the best performer life. Love D'Angelo. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah On yeah, some yeah, straight yeah, voodoo yeah, shit. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. You, mm-hmm. Yes. I've never seen him in person, but I've seen videos. Yes. Mm-hmm. For you to get your music out in today's dominating hip hop industry as a rapper, but you're much more than a rapper, you're quite the artist. Um, is it is it hard for you to to like do that? Fortunately, no. It's not hard to put my music up. Okay. It's actually extremely easy. I have a a very particular plat- fan base platform or okay. so like I kind of can do what I want to do, like the way I set it up. Mm-hmm. We might, we were just fucking with SoundCloud, so we'll just put out songs, 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 songs. They get like millions of plays, music plays, hundreds of thousands, millions here and there, and like it's different sounds every time. It sound like this, it sound like that, it sound like this, it sound like that. So I kind of became unpredictable for my fan base. Mm-hmm. So it let it allowed me to just be 
honest and free with my creativity. So I, now when I put out music, it's like it just always gets like soaked in. You know, mm. so I don't really drop a lot outside of albums though. Like that's not my thing. I'm a project type of person. I like that. But uh, you know, it's just it's just you know it's it's. 2018, it's not really hard to put music out. Yes, because, out. like, if I see you, um, it's not hard to put uh, music out, but, like, it's not like I see you, and I said the same to Ergang, like, it's not like I see you and other other people in, like, the typical radio shows where who are big, and mm-hmm. I want to see, like, the new wave, and I don't really see that. I only see, like, very big mains. Mainstream is maybe an ugly word, but... No, um, that's a real thing. Like, why the, like... Is it's it? more so like a thing. All right, <coughs> it's a new. Everything is pretty much new right now, like streaming, all of that. So while I might have like some 15 million streams on something on Spotify, someone might have like 200,000 spins on radio. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Exactly. And not a lot of sales. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm still making money off of Spotify. It's just different ways. Mm-hmm. So it's like avenues aren't like as in your face as they used to be like exactly. the radio is still the radio of course but like that's like a super a super high level industry ass thing like a radio campaign you know what i mean mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. like our way of doing the campaigns we go to spotify we go to apple music we go mm-hmm. to twitter we mm-hmm. go to instagram you know what i'm saying we do shit like sell hoodies you know mm-hmm. like it's just like zero fatigue yeah zero fatigue mm-hmm. like and it's, it's like we found a way to just captivate a lot of people and it's like Shit, when I put a song on fucking Spotify, it's almost like it's on the radio. It's mm. just getting so much plays, and my money, my pockets is tearing up. So it's like shit. Good for you. You know what I mean? Hypothetically, if you would organize a cipher, like for example, <laughs> the XXL freshman class, uh-huh. but you do it. Yeah. You're the boss. You're in control. Yeah. You get to pick the artist. Who would you spar or vibe with right now? How many artists? Whatever. I'm pick five. Pick five. Barry. My okay. boy Barry, he's from St. Louis. He's uh, part of Zero Fatigue. Okay. Uh, check him out. Barry. Barry, one, two. J.I.D. Of course. Yeah. My boy J2. J J2, he's from Zero Fatigue. Okay. I got like some of the coldest rap homies. Like, okay, alive. I'm looking into that. Everybody's damn near from the Midwest, I'm about to say. Saba. Saba, okay. Uh... I don't. I, I'm not gonna count myself. No, yeah, but you can put yourself in there. I mean, I'm already in but, there. Obviously. Yeah, you're right. All right. And my last person. It's parring and vibing, like. My last person is G Herbo. Okay. Okay. G Herbo. Good. We're almost there. Um. I noticed a comment on your Mass Appeal documentary that really stuck by me, and it said, Smino does not know how, how important he is to so many individuals in St. Louis. He is our new hope." How does that make you feel that this is how people write about you in just a simple comment? Great. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess is that, is kind of make me feel a little, uh, like, responsible for, you know what I'm saying? Just the fact that I got people looking up to what I'm doing from where I'm from. I just feel responsible to kind of try to help them mm-hmm. meet some some anything shit any way I can. So mm-hmm. I go back home every Christmas and do this shit called Christmas, and we uh, we basically like always give back to the kids like some some kind of way. Like I took kids to a, a museum and shit in St. Wow. Louis. Then the last time uh, I do a workshop where a bunch of like my creative friends came out and they talked to kids about what they do, and then we did like a talent show. And then they wow, all got, that's really they, nice. Yeah, then they all were able to come to my show for free that night too. So um, a, a bit like uh, TDE does with the Christmas Compton thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, I wanted to just do something for my city, and um, yeah, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger though. I, this my I think I just had the second annual one, so this year is gonna be my third annual, and yeah. Okay. It's real dope. Um, th- my next question is quite serious, but I wanted to ask you anyway because I think, I think you, I think you'll be fine with it. Um, looking from outside in, from Belgium, it kind of feels like America is challenging its own land of the free statement. Mm -hmm. I feel like your country is going through a lot right now. There's immigration, there's racism, there's political division, there's a lot of gun violence in schools and in the streets, and then you have President Trump. Mm -hmm. How does this affect you as a fellow American, if you watch the news? 
I could tell you how it affects me as a black person more so. Okay, let's start with a that. A fellow American ain't shit so fellow about being an American, you know. Okay, I understand but that. I'll, I'll say, like, I mean, I respect everybody where I'm from, but America is just a, 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 a huge, what you said, contradiction. Um, a lot of people... I feel so much pain. Yeah, a lot of people where I'm, where I'm from... Uh, Get overlooked, bro. Like, you can't really, like, tell. There's nobody to really tell that you're unhappy. You just got to kind of be unhappy. You know what I mean? And then if it's, like, I don't know, some poli- like some political shit, forget about it. Like, America, like, even the whole voting system, like, all that shit is fucked. Gee, like, everything is fucked. But, I mean, like I said, America is a place where people make it like the people it's a lot of cool you know shit shit going on in the black community in america and that's like my favorite thing i kind of hold on to that you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying and uh man i don't know i don't really got a lot of comments on america that shit just like it is, it is what, what it is, is. You, like it's been like that it been it been the worst best place in the world you know what i'm saying but the worst place mm-hmm. on, on earth it's just filthy but i mean i think we can leave it at that it's yeah, been yeah i'm finna yeah. end up dog in america on yeah. camera and shit so um they besides music public enemy number one What's besides it? music any other passions or hobbies or favorite ways to waste your time you want to share my favorite way to waste my time is smoke big ass doobies big ass fat ass big ass stupid ass blunts i concur buy jury mm-hmm. um, i'm just fine I, I don't buy jury <laughs> unless you can and then um what else i like to do i like to cook food okay lot. yeah i can cook really well okay. chef chef boy arts me okay um, what do you cook everything pasta lemon pepper chicken lemon pepper wet chicken fish anything um wow you're quite a catch i'm all right mm. i'm trying to think and then what else are my hobbies uh I, I play the game a lot i like to play the game okay yeah be playing ufc and shit okay knocking okay. niggas out but yeah, man. <laughs> I'm just a big ass jokester, man. Um, so what's up for the future? What can we expect from you? You told me already you released that new track with McJenkins. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's been a while. I like... just I just finished my album. Okay, and when when can we expect that? This year, 2018. I just finished my album. I, okay, okay, that's cool. Because I don't want to put no stamp no. on myself yet. I'm already happy We're, that you put shared it like that. this. I'm mixing it and I'm shooting the cover. Hopefully, when I get back. I'm okay. shooting the cover when I get back to Chicago. That's very good news. But I'm mixing that bitch right now. Then it's going to get mastered. Then it's going to get... Yeah. Yeah, it's time. Okay. This this time around going to be a lot more vast. Just for you, because you said you want to see me in more places. It's mm-hmm. going to be a lot more vast. Hey, L10, pull me up, baby. Pull me up. Yeah. So, last but not least, my final question. You started with it, so I love it that you started <laughs> with it. But if I say Belgium... What three words pop in your head? It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong, but what three words pop immediately in Belgium, your head? Belgium. 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 Seldom. Held them. And grilled them. All right. That's it. Okay, cool. Now we're going to take the Polaroids. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. You do it. You do it. All right. So I'm going to push it there. Put it. Right here. Right here. Yeah. All right. Right here. We go. Right. Make me look cool. Hey, you don't need much, my friend. You don't need much. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. That felt good, didn't it? I said that felt good, didn't it?